Hello, hello. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. It is crazy hot here in Vermont. Um, 90s, really humid, um, trying to keep things cool. But um, <clears throat> I completely forgot to do a video yesterday because things have been kind of, you know, kind of busy. But so what I want to talk to you about today is um, I have a client who had some range of motion issues in her shoulder, her um, right shoulder specifically, um, and she didn't know why this was being caused. She couldn't reach around like her back. Um, and, you know, after talking with her for a little bit, it finally came out that she actually does a lot of knitting. And so her arm is like kind of, this arm is kind of constantly doing this and like in a very limited range of motion and these, these muscles were getting, um, you know, really like tired and taxed and then, you know, her limited range, um, because they were in that limited range so much that she lost, um, complete range of motion in her arm. And so she said she had been to the doctor about it. The doctor told her there was nothing wrong with her arm. Um, and, uh, basically brushed her off, which is really unfortunate. Um, and she went to PT for it, which she said made it worse. Um, <clears throat> which the PT, what the PT was having her do was arm circles. So these, circles where you're making larger and larger circles like this. Um, and basically I think what that was doing was just taxing those muscles even more in, you know, a range of motion that was still pretty limited. Um, so what I started doing with her, and this was after knowing that she had been to PT, that she had spoken with her doctor and got the okay to, um, to do these things was, um, I started with something similar to the arm circles, but instead of having her do them standing up and doing them out to the side, I had her leaning over a bench or a chair and swinging her arm in circles. So instead of using the muscles to move her arm to get that, to get a greater range of motion, we were swinging it around. So swinging it around in larger than smaller circles, switching directions and then swinging it up, up and down, and then swinging it from side to side. And that just kind of loosened everything up. Um, and also she did say to me um, that she wasn't going to stop knitting, which um, if you have an overuse injury, which is what this ended up, which is what this is, um, stopping what is causing the overuse injury is like the first step in getting better. She said she wasn't going to, but she also just kind of lessened her knitting, um, kind of, or, uh, not purposely, but she wasn't working on anything that she was excited about. So she wasn't knitting as much. Um, so I think that has also helped. So <clears throat> the next thing I, I had her do was I had her grab a, um, I have a stick, which I forgot to bring out with me. I'm going to grab it. So I have a stick here that I then had her lay on her back, on the floor, knees up, feet flat on the floor. Now holding the stick straight up above her, going all the way as far as she could. Now, when she first started doing this, she could only get to about here. And then back. And then she could make it a little bit further. And each time we did it, she made it a little further and a little further and a little further. She still is not to the point where she's flat on the ground yet. She still can't reach completely above her head. Um, when her, with her, the backs of her hands on the floor. But she's getting so much closer than she was before we started doing this. Um, and then from there, I was having her do um, elbow raises. So she put her hand behind her head and then 
with her arm here, trying to touch the floor with her elbow. And this one, she has actually gotten to the point where she can get her elbow flat to the, flat to the floor. And when we first started, she was getting it to about here and then, you know, here. And we do, for each of these exercises, we were doing probably, we're doing around five, uh, five reps and then doing two sets each. Um, and then the last one I was having her do was a lion chop. So she's in the same position and taking her arm and having a 90 degree angle for everything. She's chopping down, trying to touch the floor that way and then back up and trying to touch the floor here. And one thing that she was doing, and I'll show you this sitting up, so she was here and she would like kind of go out like this, not realizing it. So I'd have to cue her to keep her arm straight. And then when she would come up, she would bring her arm in to make it a little easier. And so I'd have to cue her to keep her arm out. Um, now this one, she could not do on her own because she did not realize that she was bringing her arm in or bringing her arm out as she did it. The other exercises I had her do at home um, and I told her to do them two to three times a day for, you know, like two or three, um, two or three sets of about five reps each. And, um, in about a week or two, well, two to, two to four weeks, um, she was making great strides and being able to like increase her range of motion. Um, and she was able to, she's been able to reach around the, her back, uh, again, which she wasn't able to do before. Um, <clears throat> one thing she could do that she hadn't done in forever was she was able to actually, you know, and it's these, you know, she was able to actually unhook her bra from the back. She was before that she was twisting it around and unhooking it in the front. Um, and she hasn't had pain just in everyday everyday activities, which she used to have, you know, she would be going about her day and she would feel a twinge here and there and she hasn't been feeling that. Um, and it took probably about, uh, she noticed the, the pain was going away within like a week or two. And then like the, the, you know, being able to reach around her back happened within a month, um, of doing these exercises. And since then, we've started doing some other range of motion exercises like um, wall circles where you have your hand against the wall and you go all the way around with it. Um, and uh, we've been doing some handcuffs with uh, handcuffs where you have your hands. This puts you through all the ranges of motion and you would do this on your stomach on the floor but you bring it bring them out and around and up above and this takes your shoulder through all the positions it can possibly be in and <clears throat> normally you would do that with tension con consistent tension throughout the entire exercise but i just have her go through the motion because i just want to to wake up those muscles and get them to stretch out and go through the range of motion. I'm not super concerned about how much tension is on it. Um, and I think that if I did, it might make it a little bit worse. And so I just want the muscles to go through. I just want the, the, um, the joints go through the ranges of motion and not worry about keeping tension on anything. So, um, and then I've also started doing a few little strengthening exercises like rows with, uh, with bands. Um, <clears throat> and you know, we're doing lower body work as you normally would do lower body work, but that's how I'm, um, helping her with her shoulder, uh, range of motion. And she's made huge strides in the month and a half or so that she's that I've been working with her and it's been fantastic. I love hearing how, you know, how much better she's doing and how her, uh, her, her, you know, quality of life has, has increased because she's able to do things with her arm that she wasn't able to do previously. Um, 
So yeah, you know, when you have limited range of motion, it really affects your life and it affects your life in some ways that you may not realize it. And, you know, a good corrective exercise program can go a long way in, um, in helping and fixing that. So I just wanted to share that little story and show you some exercises for shoulder range of motion. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit the like button, please share it, subscribe to my channel. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram as well. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, if you're in the Northeast, stay cool. Um, I don't know what it's doing in the rest of the country, but here it's hot. So <laughs> stay cool. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you later. Bye.